that's your first, uh, actually I'm going to tell you about three times, so that's your first time to, to know. Right now, I would, would like you to stand though, and with us in our call to worship. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false. Such is the company of those who seek the Lord, who seek the face of God the Jacob. Let us worship God. Let us worship God. I call our praise choir to come and sing with us. Now, this is a time if you want to dance, if you want to lift your hands, if you want to praise God by standing or by sitting is okay. You don't have to stand the whole time. For some of us, it's just not comfortable. But let's praise and let's worship God in the best way that we can.
Will you pray with me? O oh God, we worship and praise you for your gift of redemption in Christ. You chose us before the world was created. You sent him to cleanse us of all our unrighteousness. Jesus sacrificed himself for us so that we should be blameless. Your grace surrounds us and your peace dwells within us. Through Christ, who calls us and names us as your chosen people, we gather to praise you for your glorious grace. Amen. You may be seated, please. So I know you already have your announcement sheet out, and you'll notice that there are, are a few things going on this week. Of course, our Tuesday prayer at noon, and then Tuesday night at 5 p.m. is our staff parish committee meeting. And if you are part of the staff parish committee, you definitely want to come because we're talking about a new Christian ed director. And at 6.15, you'll notice if you're on missions that that's been pushed back about 15 minutes. Now, um, our mission of the month is our Layette Kits, and that uh, you'll see up on the screen, and, and we may have a video we're going to see, but I'm going to keep talking and, and see if, um, if it comes up and does its thing. Um, if you turn the page over, you'll notice that there is, uh, oh, there it is, okay. if you want to watch it again and kind of follow it, if you want to put a whole kit together. But if you're someone that maybe you're out and you see that, that um, uh, diaper pins are on sale and so you buy several of them, we're perfectly okay with, with just receiving partial kits too because we'll put those together. And that was actually a question I had uh, a week, about a week ago, can I bring a partial kit? And that goes for the layout kits, the the um, school kits and as well as the personal dignity kits. You can bring part kits in too. On the back side, there is information about our prayer walk coming up. Now we have, um, we did the prayer walk last year and we do have little bags. I should have brought some up here with me, I didn't. We have bags in the office that have some, um, some things in it to help you with your prayer walk. The prayer walk is any time during the weekend of the 17th through the 18th. Now it says prayer walk, but a, most of us prayer drive because what we're doing is we're going to places like the schools, the hospital, uh, maybe uh, the fire department, the police department. There's sidewalk chalk in these kits and you can write a little message. If they are not comfortable doing that, just sitting out front and praying for those individuals and, and the mission that they they have and what they do in our community. So um, be sure that you, if you want to pick up one of those bags today, I'll be sure and get one to you. But they're ju they just have some, some information and places that you can go and um, anyway, participate in this. It, it's, it, prayer is the most powerful, most powerful tool that God has given to us. Now again, I'm going to remind you that next week is Movie Sunday, and we will not be in the sanctuary. We will be at the State 5 Theater eating popcorn for breakfast and watching 
Soul Surfer, this is an opportunity to invite someone who maybe would might be a little more nervous coming to a worship service, but they might come and, and find out what wonderful people we are by watching the movie with us. And then the very last thing that I would bring your attention to, and that is Vacation Bible School. And I have a little sign up here. You're going to see some yard signs around town. Vacation Bible School is the 26th through the 29th. And if you are able to help that week, believe me, the more eyes we have with little ones, the better. If you're not into working with little ones, we have a lot of other things that you can do. So please, please, please put that on your calendar to do that. Are there others who might have um, some information to share with us? I know Ivy does. Are, is there anyone else that would want to share an announcement with us? Okay, so Ivy, I'll have you come. Well, good morning. I'm Ivy Kitzinger, and I am on the Pork and Sweet Corn Supper Committee, along with my husband, Nate, uh, Dave and Danelle Van Gorkum, and Ben and Carrie Gatton. And we are so excited to bring back the supper this year. We took the year off, so yay for pork supper again. Um, it will be August 10th, and you will have the option to dine in or drive through as usual. Um, there are sign up in the back if you have a job that you just love handling every year. We would love for you to sign up. Um, if you're not here in the sanctuary and you're online, you can uh, let Megan in the office know and she'll get you signed up. Um, if you would like tickets, you can also get those in the office or you can let one of us on the committee know. Um, and those are $10 in advance and $12 at the door. So we would love for your help on that day. And if you would like tickets, go ahead and let us know right away. Thank you. We're so glad you're in worship today. <laughs> That's what I was telling people last night. No more food, please, for the chickerings. We, we love them, but they're done with food for a while. <laughs> they have enough. Are there other announcements that you would offer to us? Okay, then let's change our focus to our um, conversation with God. And, and I would ask if you have prayers, if you have... Uh, experiences where God is working in your life and you'd like to share that with us. It's always uplifting to hear how God is and, and through our lives. So let me open it up to you. Um, first of all, again, thank you, thank you, God, for, for working through the trick earrings and, and for Iowa to be in worship with us today and uh, in a boot, I believe, huh? Yep, a, a walking boot. I don't know if there's a difference, but Thank you, Lord. Are there others who, you, who would who you would like to lift up or let us know about? Yes, yeah, so if you couldn't hear her, she, um, Judy is asking for uh, prayers for Haiti. Um, hurricane, is it, you said Emma? Elsa. Or is it Elsa? Or Elsa. Elsa's the latest one. Okay. okay. I was going to say, there's, sometimes there's more than one going. So, yeah, so um, Hurricane Elsa hit Haiti, and then um, they had the assassination of their president um, this last week. And so much upheaval there. Others that you would lift up? Yes. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. It's all good. Uh, I was just moved to share, I guess, that while I was cemetery walk, uh, first of all, I remembered the grief window that we had. Some of you will remember that. She has that grief window that was given by Lizzie Reed. But I was just uh, moved by the walk and the, the heritage that we had as a church, all the leaders in the community that were here and it was part of our, our history. Did you find that piece of? It is. It's up in the heritage room. Very good. It's up in the heritage room. So, yeah. So this, I 
I had not realized, I guess maybe, maybe I did, I'm not sure, but Dr. Reed's name was up here in place of the, the baptismal uh, symbols, and so it is upstairs, and um, had, I don't, I'm not quite sure why it was replaced, but anyway, we have it. Rita, do you have things to share? Wonderful. So a little update on, on Lolo El Edlin. Um, Lolo is the little five-year-old great-granddaughter of Rita, and she is doing much better. So praise God. She probably still has treatments to go, but praise God that she is doing, that she's responding and doing well. Are there others that would lift a prayer or share with us? Let's take a moment then in silence to offer our, our quiet prayers to God. We'll follow this time with a pastoral prayer, and then I will invite you to pray the Lord's Prayer with us. Let's pray together. O oh, Holy One, we thank you for being here with us. Your presence is greatly felt. You sent heavenly hosts here to worship with us, and, and we are thankful for this. It helps our minds and our hearts to focus in on you and, and to know without a doubt that you are here. We thank you for this beautiful place with all the symbolism and, and the, the windows and, and a place with the cross and, and just this, this room that lends us to know that you are here. We thank you for this building that shows others around our community and those who come into town that you are truly present in our bones. We thank you for your presence in all of creation, for you, Lord, care and take care of us through it. You have given us this so that we may know that we are yours. O Holy One, we've lifted up prayers today, prayers for need of healing and for praise, prayers of need of comfort, and especially prayers for, for just knowing that you are here. Gracious one, we've lifted up names, but we especially today lift up those who are in Miami. Many, many are being found in the rubble of that condo, and families are heartbroken, and families are yet waiting. And so we ask that you will surround your arms and give them peace and comfort. We lift up a young father and two very young children whose lives were cut short because of mental illness and because, Lord, this person could not live any longer. We don't understand the deaths that happened here last week or the week before. We don't understand. But we pray now for the little boy's mother and for their grandmother and for their whole family, that they find you and comfort in the midst of their grief. Holy One, there are many other prayers that we are lifting to you and that we need to. There are faces and names that come to our minds, there are circumstances, and we ask that you are all over it. For we know that your firm foundation is what we stand on, and that through you, all things are made right. So today, as we remember and, and we think of your Son who taught us the great love that you have for us. We remember the prayer that he taught us. We now pray this prayer back to you. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So this is our time of giving, and our giving highlight this month is our Christian education. Now we had last week uh, four or five, I believe, campers that went to Camp Okoboji. And we have this week another four or five who are going, and then we have some others that have gone different weeks. When you give to Christian education, you help out with the camping and help out with our children going to camp. I will tell you that my call from God came when I was 11 years old at Crazy Girls Camp at Lake Okoboji. I literally hear, heard the word of God, heard God say to me, teach my children. Of course, I've changed that into teach my children math, but um, that was when I first heard God's call. So camping is such an important and essential part of young people in their faith journey. So when you give today to Christian education, um, know that you're giving to part of that. And if you would like to give towards campers, just towards the campers, please put that on your check too because um, we do have an cam actual camping fund. Now remember, you may give within the plates in the back. We do have our mailbox in the breezeway outside the office. You may mail in your giving. You may go to algonaumc.com and you will find an online giving toggle which will send you to Vanco, our online giving service. Or if you have a smartphone, I can help you put a giving app on your phone. Right now, let's pray. Let's pray and give God praise for all that God has given to us. We thank you, gracious one, for our campers. For those young ones that went, have already been camping and for our new ones that are going camping this week and the weeks to come. We pray as they go to church camp, Lord, that you will touch their hearts. We thank you that you have given us these children and we pray that as we give back to you, that our giving strengthens them and lifts your name on high. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, now it's children's time, and unless somebody wants to come sit down with me, I'm going to come and stand closer to you. Do you want to come and come down? Okay, go ahead. Great. Yes. These are our guys that lit candles today. They did a really good job. And I'll have you come in after worship, and well, once we're towards the end, I'll have you come and put them out, okay? Okay, very good. So, um, I have on my phone some sounds and I need to turn this up here. I have some sounds that I'm hoping you can identify. Come on phone, cooperate. There we go. Let me see if I can find the first one. Oh, here we go. Commercial, of course. That was the sound of the commercial. What do you think? What is that? A cat, a kitty. In fact, this, you can see the picture of a kitty. She has some little kittens there. You were playing with kittens, yeah? Do you have kittens out there right again? You do? The kittens don't like you. Oh, no. Come on, little kitties. Let's see. Okay, let's see if we can do this one without a commercial. What does that sound like? What's that? It's a helicopter. Yep, we can hear the... Yep, you can hear the blades. Okay, let's see. I have one more. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Yeah, it kind of has that deep. Yep. Yep, fire truck. So that was really good. You were able to identify. Even the commercial, you were able to identify. <laughs> Yay. Yeah, that's really wonderful that you could do that. It's, it's great to be able to hear and know sounds and know what's around us. Sometimes I hear sounds like in the church at night when I'm here at, at dark and this, this sanctuary pops, so I don't know what those sounds are, but, but it's wonderful to be able to hear. The great thing is, is we can also hear God. Did you know that? Have you ever heard God? No? Who? Moses did? Yeah, Moses did hear God. Yeah, let's ask big people. Have you ever heard God? Yeah? Sometimes. You know, sometimes God doesn't just like talk, like in the Bible, God talks, and, like talked to Jesus and said, you are my son, you are my beloved, I'm proud of you, and people heard those kinds of things. Well, sometimes we don't hear like that, like big booming voice from heaven calling out to us, but we can hear God sometimes. Now, the sound of the kitties, the kitties meowing, I love kitties. Oh. You like dogs? Yeah, well, maybe the sound of a dog, the, the sound of a dog is like the sound of God. Like for me, that little meowing and that little loving up of kitties, that's like, that's like God right there with me because I love to hear that. Maybe for some big people, the sound of a, a crying baby, and like a, a grandbaby, or I bet every time your parents hear your voice, it's, it's like hearing the sound of God. Yeah. Sometimes your voice is pretty loud, well, and yeah, and sometimes we don't always say the nicest things, but still, I, I'd rather hear my grandson's voices, even if they're saying something armory, than not hear them at all. It's like hearing the voice of God. It's wonderful to hear God, but you know, sometimes we have to be really quiet to hear God. Yeah, we can be really loud. I can be really loud. I like my loud music, and so, but to have it quiet, that's how people in the Bible sometimes heard God, was just when it was really quiet. So right now, let's, let's be really quiet for just a little bit and see what we can hear, okay? Okay, so let's, let's listen. What can you hear? You hear the air conditioning? The sound system has a bit of a buzz that, that you can hear. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we're really quiet, we can hear God's voice. And being quiet, we can also talk to God, too. So let's do that right now. And big people, I want you to help us. Let's pray together, okay? Now repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for sound. Thank you for, sound. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for helping us. Hear, you. hear you. In the name of Jesus. Good job. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming down. It's great to have children to sit down with, I think. So our first lesson today comes from the book of Psalms. And this psalm um, is attributed to David, King David in particular. And... Um, Though I have to say that I'm not always positive that we know exactly who wrote these songs, but most of the psalms, but most of them are attributed to either King David or his son Solomon. This is Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he has founded it on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates. And be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. 
Lift up your heads, ye mighty gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Our second passage is an Old Testament piece from 2 Samuel. This is um, Samuel 6, verses 1 through 5, 12b, meaning the second part of the verse, through 19. And this is um, the time when the Ark of the Covenant has been brought home. Now, the Ark of the Covenant, we're going to talk a little more about what happened to it, but it has been away from Israel. And King David takes 30,000 men out to bring back the Ark of the Covenant. So it begins, David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went from Baal Judah to bring up from there the Ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the Ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ohio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the Ark of God. Ohio went in front of the Ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. It was told King David, the Lord was blessed the Lord has blessed the household of Obedidim and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obedidim to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, David sacrificed an ox and a fat ring. David danced before the Lord with all his might. He was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came to the city of David, Michal, the daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought the ark of the Lord and sat it in its place inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people. He blessed them in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people, the whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake of bread, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, if you're someone who works with young people, you learn very quickly to sense when the barometric pressure changes. They get a little weird. Likewise, uh, if you work with people who have dementia, I have personal first-hand knowledge of this, you can sense the coming of a full moon, truly. And I think just being a human, most of us can sense when it's going to rain. Yeah, you can smell it in the air. You know when it's going to rain. You know the coming of storms. In fact, I think if you ponder for a moment, you might even think of other things that humans can sense without really seeing. We kind of know that things are going to happen or coming. Um, maybe you know when someone has stepped in the room and you didn't even have to look. Or maybe you know um, it's instinctively as you're driving which way a driver is going to turn. There are lots of things around us that we actually know without even seeing. In fact, I believe that we can even sense the presence presence of the supernatural. Now I'm talking about the presence of God, the presence of the Holy Spirit. In fact, there are many, there are those who can feel God around them all the time. All the time. Maybe you're one of those people. It's perfectly okay if, if you 
don't always feel God around you, that's kind of hard. I mean, I admit that, that we get busy in our lives. We don't always feel God. But me, I'm a little bit selfish. I'd love to be able to see God every moment and to know that the presence of God is with me every moment. I would love to be, have been in those ancient days when the, the, those ancient Israelites could see the Shekinah glory, the cloud of God before their tent and the fire, the pillar of fire of the Holy Spirit at night. I would have loved to have been able to see that and know without a doubt that God is with me all the time. In fact, the Ark of the Covenant, it is said that God resided on the mercy seat. The Ark of the Covenant had these wings above it, so these, these like cherubim wings, looked like big angels' wings. And the people believed and they knew that God resided right there on the top of the Ark of the Covenant. Now, you know the Ark of the Covenant, right? You remember those stories of the Ark of the Covenant? Well, if you don't, I'm more than positive that you know about Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant, right? You do know that story, how Indiana Jones went and he found the Ark of the Covenant only to have it stolen by the Nazis who decided that they were going to, they were going to harness the power of God and there's a scene in the movie, Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant, where, where the Nazis are trying to open up the, the, the Ark, and instead of receiving power, a whole lot of Nazis died that day because the, they couldn't see, they couldn't touch the Ark. They could not, they could not uh, be in that great power without dying. Well, Indiana Jones, he knew this. He knew that they could not, he could not see, he could not look upon God and God's power. And so he closed his eyes, and by the time everything was said and done, all of the Nazis were gone, and of course the movie goes on a little bit more, but, but it ends up that, that Indiana Jones takes the Ark of the Covenant, and he hides it away in a government warehouse somewhere, <laughs> so that people couldn't find it. That's Hollywood. Yeah, it's fun. The real story, though, according to scripture, the real story is um, that the Ark of the Covenant was made by an artisan who made it so that Moses could put the instructions from God, what we might call the Ten Commandments, the instructions from God in this Ark. And so Moses put these instructions in there. The ark was sealed. Um, it was said that God lived on the mercy seat. And the Israelites carried the ark of the covenant on poles around with them as they uh, traveled in the wilderness. It was said that no one could look into the ark. If they did, they would die. No one could touch the ark. If they did, they would die. Well, the story goes that um, the ark goes somewhat unmentioned until the time of Samuel. And when Samuel is called, we learn that the ark is in that temple where Samuel is first called. And then we learn that it's not a whole long time after that that the Philistines steal the ark. Well, the Philistines have a really rough time with the ark because they don't understand its power. And they try to look in it and they try to touch it. And a whole lot of Philistines die. To the point where the Philistines decided that they, they were not going to have anything to do with this ark. And they end up calling King David and saying, come get this thing. We're tired of it. We're tired of our people dying. Just come get it. And so King David, he goes and he sends out a group of, of people to go out and try and find and, and get this ark back. And the first time they do, they go out to get the ark and it kills some of David's people even. So David gets scared of the thing, and it sits for uh, uh, several years before he then um, gets the courage to bring these 30,000 men to come and bring the ark back. And even then, as it's sitting on a cart and, and it's coming back, um, somebody who innocently did not want it to fall off because the cart was going through mud or whatnot, and even this person who just pushed the ark back up onto the cart died because he touched it. 
But when they finally get it back, they finally get it back to, um, to Israel, and they bring it in to the city, and David is so excited that the ark is coming that he begins to dance before it. He dances with excitement because he knows this symbol, this, the presence of God is coming back where it belongs. I would love to have seen that. How wonderful would that have been? You see, the beauty of the ark is that it is the symbol of the presence of God in the midst of the people. All who believed in God knew that God resided in that mercy seat. They knew it. They counted on it. They could see the visible, um, visible presence of God. That all changed, though. When God came to earth in the form of Jesus, and as Jesus, just before, just as Jesus was dying on the cross, the curtain where the Ark of the Covenant was kept and the Holy of Holies was torn, and no longer did anyone have to worry about touching the Ark of the Covenant any longer because God was no longer sitting just in that mercy seat. God was for all of us. And in the death of Jesus, we now are able to have that relationship with God and to know that God is all around us all the time, that the Holy Spirit is here with us always. We do not have to, to have that particular symbol in front of us. However, I would say that if you're like me, sometimes I forget the presence of God is with me. And I need the symbols. We were talking about um, the stained glass window. This, this sanctuary is full of symbols that remind us of the presence of God. I mean, this is the, the symbol of baptism, the shell and the water. No wonder the baptismal fonts is there. And this, the grapes, reminds us uh, of the wine and the body, the blood of Christ and the forgiveness of sins. And there are other symbols that are in our, on our, um, our beautiful windows. The sim and especially the symbol of the cross. For me, this particular cross is highly important. When I first went to St. Paul's School of Theology, I went to visit the campus. Didn't even know if I wanted to go to that particular seminary in Kansas City. As I was driving into the driveway, into the parking lot of the, the seminary, on top of their chapel sat a Celtic cross, just like this one. And immediately God said, that's where you're going. This is where you're going to school. And the moment I walked into the sanctuary for the first time and saw that Celtic cross, I knew. I knew this is where I belonged. Sort of a symbol that God offers to me. I think that God offers us all symbols. I know that there's someone here in this congregation who shares with me all the time that when sh she's having a rough time, God sends white feathers. She finds white feathers all over. And it reminds her that God is there with her. I have another friend who does, who's not in Algona, but actually lives in Des Moines, that, that says every time he has some issue, he, has, he wonders if God is really there, somehow the color yellow becomes present in front of him. He said one day he had walked out of a meeting so distressed and he walked out onto the street almost to be hit by a yellow school bus. He knew God was with him. There are so many symbols that God sends to us to remind us that God is with us. There are things that God does for us to help us to recognize that we are not alone. We must put our, our, God, our Jesus glasses on, though. We have to open our hearts and our minds so that we know without a doubt that God is with us. So I want to offer you some ways that, that you can be part of that. I mean, we do have to open our hearts and our minds. We do have to walk a little bit towards God. And that is, I have, I have five things to offer to you. And first of all, that is to, to practice gratitude. Be thankful. To know that God is with you, but also providing all of the things that you um, have and that you think that you have worked for. Actually, God gave you the gifts and the talents. Be thankful for everything. The second one is to give God credit. 
I know we're, we're, um, we see uh, now and then in sports where football players will make a touchdown and then come down and, and they're giving praise to God. Well, we can do that in everything. We don't have to make a touchdown. Give God credit for everything. If somebody asks you why you have your smile on your face, well, I'm, I'm blessed today. God has blessed me today. Give God a credit. The third is to study scripture. Find the stories of people who, um, who knew that God was around them. Find those stories and read about those people. Number four, study scripture again, but see how it relates to you. You can really feel the presence of God. If you read this story about David and, and how these 30,000 people, um, troops are bringing in, the Ark of the Covenant, what if you were one of the people looking out the window, watching this parade come in, watching David dance? Put yourself there. Put yourself there, watching David dance. You would know that God was there with you when you saw that covenant, or that Ark of the Covenant come through. And the last, number five, recognize the many ways that God speaks to you. We were, I was talking with our young people over here about how God speaks, and, and God speaks to us in so many different ways. Not just that booming voice or that voice in our heads, but God pro provides ways to connect with us that, that maybe we don't even realize, but we have to open our hearts and our minds to it. You know, all I can say is I was so interested in Star Trek when I was a kid, I couldn't see straight, and God spoke to me through Star Trek. <coughs> Weird, I know, but God does these things. You know, if shopping is your thing, God's going to speak to you through shopping. If fishing is your thing, you're going to find God out at the pond. God is going to speak to you in the ways that are meaningful. See, I believe God is with us always, around us, always. That the Holy Spirit is always here. We just must learn to open our eyes and, and our minds and our hearts to hear and to see God and to know that God is there. To sense the presence of God is more than knowing when it will rain or when there will be a full moon or when the barometric pressure changes. It's about faith. It's about knowing that you are never alone. So I'm going to invite you to dance today. Dance. Dance knowing that the presence of God is here with you. Dance as if you are David before the ark. Let's pray right now. Gracious and Holy One, I pray that you will light a fire underneath us, that you will help us to know that you are here with us and even in the most rotten of times. Help us to know that you comfort us and even hold us. Oh, Gracious One, help us today to dance. To dance because you are with us. In the power of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, praise choir, come up, because we need some music to dance to. Our last song is Love Has Come, and um, if you are comfortable and would like to stand, if that's comfortable for you, I'm going to invite you to stand up and get ready to sing. And, and again, if um, standing is not your thing and that's not comfortable for you, please stay seated and praise where you are. Lift your hands. Dance in the aisles if you'd like to. That'd be something for Methodists, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs>
every move that you make, every piece of your life, God is with you. Have that foundation and go out and be God's people. May you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, know the great love God has for you, the height and the depth and the width of that love. And all the people said, Amen. Amen. So next week, there is Saturday night service at 5 p.m., but, but next Sunday at 9 a.m., we are at the theater. So if you come here, there's not going to be anyone here. Come eat popcorn for breakfast.